Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be looking at the chi-squared statistic. Now the good news about this is that the chi-squared formula is provided in your exam so you don't need to learn it but you do need to know how to apply it. Now chi-squared is used to see there's a significant difference between what you've observed and what you've expected. Now normally this is applied to a genetic cross very rarely have I seen it used elsewhere but they can sometimes try and trick you in an exam to use it somewhere else. Now this is a really good statistic to see if there is a significant difference or not between what you've observed in the experiment and what you expect to get in the experiment. Now what you observed is what the offspring is from the actual cross and then what you've expected you need to calculate using the expected ratio. So in this particular example I was expecting to get a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio and as you can see here what they've done is they've taken the total number of observed individuals and try to work out what expected value I'd get if I had 9 out of 16 lots of smooth yellow and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example. Um, if you want to pause it and have a go, please do. But this is the formula that we use to um, work out our chi-squared. So it's observed, take expected value squared over expected, and it's the sum of all of those. Then what you would do is look up your sum of chi-squared in a table of probability uh, by looking at the correct degrees of freedom, which is the number of phenotypes take away one. And again, I'll show you this in a second. So here's an example if you want to pause it and have a go. It's a very good idea to lay out your calculations here in a table like the one in this shown on this slide. Um, it also allows the examiner to award you marks for you working out if you were to go wrong in the process. Um, and get the actual wrong value at the end. But if you show the examiner that you laid it out like this, then it shows them that you know what you're doing. You can probably pick up some marks working out. So my observed values are here in the question. However, I need to work out my expected values. So my total number of individuals here is 292. So what I do is do 292 divided by 4 because my expected ratio is 3 to 1. So if I add 3 to 1 together, that equals 4. And then I times that by 3 because my expected tall individuals is the ratio for 3. Um, so that gives me 2, 1, 9. And then the expected short, very similar. I've done, got my total number of observed individuals divided by 4 and then I times it by 1, which is 73. So these are my expected values. So there's my ratio 3 to 1. That's how it's been used. So these are the observed values taken directly from the question and these are my expected that I've just calculated. I do my observed take expected and then I square those values. Now when I square a negative, don't forget a negative times a negative becomes positive so that's where that's gone. I then do my value of observed take expected squared over my expected values which are here in this column and then I look at the sum of those individuals. So that's my chi-squared value. I then work out my degrees of freedom, which is 1, and I would then look at that in a probability table up to the 5% critical value level. Now, this is an example of the critical value tables and the probability tables that you'll be expected to compare and find your chi-squared value on. Now, if your value lies to the left-hand side of your 5%, so this is also known as 5%, 0.05. If, if your number lies to this side of my 5% value, there is no significant difference between what you have observed and what you have expected. And your null hypothesis is accepted. Now, your null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference between what you've observed and what you've expected. Um, if my value was to lie to the right-hand side of a 5% level, it means that there is a significant difference between what you've observed and what you've expected, and the null hypothesis is rejected. So in our specific example here, I've got degrees of freedom 1, so I'm looking at this line here. The critical value at the 5% level is 3.84, and my, my chi-squared value was 0.292. So therefore... And this is where I get all my marking points here for, is my you get a mark for saying what your chi-squared value is, and if it's less than my critical value, here's my critical value. We need to get we get a mark here for saying that my probability that the difference is due to chance here is greater than five percent, and that there is no significant difference between what I've observed and what I've expected. Therefore, I accept the null hypothesis. So this is what you get your marks for, guys. In the next video, I will show you this example. Good luck.